All right, good evening, folks. I'm uh, just going to say this is going to be slightly different. It's obviously a bonus episode. Uh, I'm sitting here with all day, uh, but I would like to say I have just been fed. Uh, I think this is the first time I can say I've sat down here at this bar for one of these episodes where I am now on a full stomach. Uh, and it's also a lot later in the day than we usually film these. Yeah, uh, we, have actually, we actually have had a couple of drinks, and uh, this should be rather interesting. So it's almost as if I now had a quaalude in his. So I'm full, <laughs> and I'm sitting here at the bar. But here's the deal, everybody. It's bonus episode night. You can see the bottle on the bar. We've eaten. We've been drinking. And uh, we decided to film an episode um, for a bonus night. And um, I think we're pretty excited about this, this bottle. This particular bottle is not on the shelf anywhere else in the bar. Um, so the only way this bottle could be um, shared with you would be as a bonus episode because we cannot open it in yes. front of you because it's already been opened. Yes. For yes. different reasons. And as, as we remember on regular nights, uh, we open a bottle randomly and we find out and we share with you. And on bonus nights generally, we pick the bottle. There's only been one time where the bonus bottle was brand new. And that, and was that was the uh, Robert Burns. Burns. The very, yeah. very the first, first bonus first, episode. The first bonus episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so tonight, the bonus episode is an old Putney. Old Putney. 21 year old. Now, this is a. You know, old Putney, um, their logoing, their branding, you can't see it, and we'll work on that at some point, everybody. But it's a, it's a, it's a seagoing vessel. Old Putney is a. Uh, is a coastal, is a coastal whiskey. In fact, it's the northernmost east coast distillery in Scotland, pretty far up on the east coast. And uh, what I can tell you right off the bat about this 21 year old old Putney is this particular uh, bottle is about five or six years old from its release. And this bottle was actually released, this was the year the old Putney 21 um, got whiskey of the year. Oh, yeah. Whiskey of the year. Yeah, yeah. And so uh, a number of these bottles have been um, dispatched here at the bar o over over the last few years. And this is the last one in the bar. And uh, so it, it probably seemed like a good idea to share some of that with you and uh, see if we can recognize, you know, why this would have been graded um, Whiskey of the Year. Yeah, I think uh, this has been a staple of a couple of New Year's, mm -hmm. uh, maybe one or two of your birthdays here. Uh, definitely a couple of good events that have happened here. Yeah. We've drank out of the Old Pontney. Old Pontney is uh, one of these drinks that we've come to know and love. Yep. Uh, you know you have a few bottles of uh, other grades. Yeah, we, we have some other ones. Are, are they up above here on us? Right yeah, there. there's some right there. Yeah, yeah. the thing about the Old Pontney is the, uh, the town it's located in, and I'm going to look in the book because I can't recall, um, but for a while it was only accessible by ship. And again, so that's why almost on every old Putney, in fact, they have a release called the Navigator. Um, it was it was a, it was a land locked town on the coast. You could only access it via by, the ocean. By water. Yeah, and so oftentimes, um, unlike say the Islas, um, which is you know an island, um, but the Isla were the Pedes. Um, old Putney is. Um, not that it's not a peaty whiskey necessarily no. you're gonna get a little yeah. bit more of those ocean flavors yeah i mean there's there, there definitely has a hint of the peat in this uh this is definitely uh a very robust drink in the sense that we're gonna get some good tastes yeah we've got 46 46 percent alcohol we've got some it's slightly dark color yeah, this isn't a golden a nice hay color or anything you know it's all in like printed cursive and so i can't even read what this label says um, yeah, I can't read it, but it's 21 years old, 46% alcohol. We did do a quick preview in the book, and it's not in the book, but what we can learn about Old Putney together, it's, um, do coastal whiskeys really taste of salt, right? And again, we're talking about the ocean, right? This isn't a lake or anything like that. And um, we were already referencing that we're probably not going to get a lot of that peatiness that we no. get on the East Coast Island coastal whiskeys. But on, uh, I don't know, excuse me, on the West Coast Island whiskeys. But on those East Coast whiskeys, um, tends to just be more about the seashore, the sea breezes blowing through the storehouses. And so there is a, there is a debate. And uh, 
and especially regarding the 25 year old. So we're already in the club of spending a lot of time in a warehouse getting a lot of that ocean air. Yes. Yes. It's definitely being exposed to the, yeah. to the elements. So not only is it on the coast, it's the northernmost distillery on the mainland. And the, the town is Wick, right? The town is Wick. Um, Rock-faced county of Kethnis. And the town was designed, um, the town was designed by this one dude and built by Sir William Pulteney. That's... Old and it's Pultney. Old Pultney in 1810 as a fishing port. The distillery goes back to 1826, and it's uh, right in town, and it's one of the few urban distilleries, uh, only 250 yards from the, uh, the harbor. Oban also, I think, um, brags about 130 steps or something like that to the ocean uh, on the other coast. Nova Scotch, how we look forward to drinking. Let's see, anything else that we should show? No. Nope. No, nope. so we're going to find out. We see a uh, maritime character, very salty. These are some other releases. The 12 year old references are very salty. The 18 year old references a uh, maritime character. The, uh, the 26 year old discusses uh, minty and malty. Hmm. hmm. We're gonna find out now. So and the thirty-two year old discusses it's uh, muscular and dry. So I'm gonna ask you a couple questions mm -hmm. and you either say, Oh, I have no idea what you're talking about, or okay, so this is a unique bottle. I mean obviously it definitely has the ship on it, it looks like a steam of sorts, there's uh, seagulls, blah blah blah. Now, the shape of the bottle. Do you think that the shape of this bottle will affect how this tastes? In the sense that this is a very different looking bottle from most of the bottles that we have here. So, so this is my belief. And I think I could back it up, but I'm not going to. All right. That the, actually the shape of this bottle with its um, double bulb is actually consistent with the shape of the still that old Putney uses. Okay. Um, the stills um, in the manufacturer uh, the, of, of, of scotch or the spirit that becomes scotch in Scotland, um, almost all the distilleries have a different shape skill. Some will have one of these, some will have some of these, some will be just sort of a, a narrowing tip, like if you've ever seen moonshine made. And so the shape of the still is a contributing factor to the flavors. In fact, stills are um, traditionally copper. And copper is a, is a weak metal. And what I mean by that is over time, copper becomes thinner through use. Okay. Right, so the, the metal will dissipate, so to speak. And so actually it's suggested that in the distillation process, you'll actually have some copper residue All right. in the liquor. So I think that the shape of this bottle, and I look at some of these other old Pultney bottles we have up there, yep. and it's identical, identical, identical bottles. I think that this bottle is meant to mimic the shape of the stills of All old right. Pultney. Okay. Could be wrong, but it's a good guess, right? You gotta give me that. And it sounds good. It sounds yeah. really good. I, I would definitely have to say, hey, look, that sounds like it's very, very plausible. I mean, if it's BS, that was some solid BS. <laughs> solid, solid. <laughs> yeah. So. Ready to pull? Yeah, yeah. So whiskey of the year. See, it's 2000, so I'm thinking 2000, or it's 2020, so I'm thinking 2015, 2016, somewhere in that range, the old Putney 21. And there are a number of whiskeys of the year, depending on, you know, who thinks they are the judge. But this particular year, I do believe this was whiskey of the year um, from Michael Jackson. Mm, it, was, it was certainly one of the more well-known judging circles that um, identified this as the whiskey of the year. And you don't talk about the... Uh, not beat it, right? <laughs> talking, not Billy Jean. Okay. Right, we're talking about Mr. Whiskey. Just make it draw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just make it draw. I know any other way, like, right? This is a no Vincent Price <laughs> knockoff here. So, um, so the, the old Pulteney 21, and this is the last bottle in the house. And, and again, it's, it's good. So we've been drinking it. We have drank it. So, so why not have a little bit more? Why not? Let's, let's see if it's held up. Thought we had our first cork failure. It's been a while since we've, we've pulled into this bottle. 
but we don't. Oh, that's a yeah. good one. That's a solid. That was a solid one. Yeah, and that's got a nice, almost meaty, and not like steak meaty, but like there's some substance to that nose. Yeah. It's not overpowering, but it's not subtle. It's not directing you in one direction only. It, it's um, it's meaty. The old Pulteney 21, I think we decided it said 46% alcohol, which, and they've done the math for us, 92 proof. So, so we're gonna pay attention that if we notice anything maritime, oh, hold on, there's some words I can read. The harbor town of Wick, the far north corner, famed for its rugged, a rich seafaring history, home of the most northerly distillery in all of mainland Scotland, Matured in fine oak casks, quietly breathing in the fresh sea air. Old Pulteney is the very essence of this unique place. Intricate, balanced, and with a delicate mineral salted spiciness. That's what we got. Well, let's just see if that's what it's all about. Yeah, that's a familiar nose. And you can definitely, before you even when you inhale, you can take some of that in already. Mm -hmm. You can already start to pick and taste it before it even yep. touches your mouth. I, I do pick up on some of that sea air right there on the nose. Yeah, every time you can breathe. Yeah, yep. you know. right. Just like if you've ever been to the beach, right? You know that the air is a little different on the beach just due to the overwhelming contribution of the ocean to that air. So a couple of things, oily. I definitely pick up on some oily factors. And what I mean by that is it slides around in my yeah, mouth. Yeah, it coats. Yeah, and there is some peat in there. Very, very little. Yeah, but there, there's some peat, the oil slides around. There's a little bit of peat, but not like a campfire. No. Just a breeze blowing by. If somebody had a, a fire three miles down the beach, and just now and then, you're gonna get a whiff of that smoke. <laughs> That's a great visual, actually. right? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it really is. It's it's very light and that 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 peaty sense, right. and it certainly has. There's a lot of there's a lot to this. You, there's not much heat mm. in here. I mean, no. you, you, I don't feel like I've taken something down no, that's medicinal or or anything. I'm like, oh yeah, that's no. gonna warm me up. Uh, but this is a complicated whiskey. It's got there's a lot of notes to it, right? Uh, the sweetness that that that's there is very 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 mm -hmm. minimal. It's balancing that smoke. Yeah, it's got it's got like almost uh, how do I how am I gonna put this? It's it's enticing you to drink more. Mm -hmm. Based on the fact, <laughs> based on the fact that you your initial draw is like, oh, okay, I, I need to have some more of that. I need to have some more. Mm -hmm. But then when you get it in you, you all of a sudden get this dynamic tasting across the across the across the palate, which goes to that that coating. You don't just drink this. You are now going to break and make sure that right. you have been tasting the right. entire 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 drink. And it's malty, right? And so that oily that that slides around and that sweetness that balances with that campfire down the beach and some of that maltiness from the grain. I mean, this is a complicated whiskey. There's a lot to look for in this dram. Yeah, this is something that you definitely, you're not going to force down. You, you, you're going to take your time. You should. If somebody pours you a glass of this, they should know what they're pouring you and explain to you. You know, periodically we've had a drink of whiskey with somebody who would just, and was like, oh, we don't drink like that. Yeah. <laughs> and this for sure is not a whiskey that you would want somebody to drink like that. This is not an introduction whiskey. No. For a number of reasons, but including that you would want somebody to sort of, like in a video game sense, level up. To having this whiskey to, to understand be able to appreciate it. the complexity. Yeah, I mean this this is one of those 
this is where you get to the point where now you're going to truly to the essence of scotch drinking yeah. and I, I, i'll throw it out here is this is like now you're starting to reach the peak where now you're not just drinking a drink you now have to savor it Mm-hmm. and try to gain the different taste that you're going to be given by something like this. Trying to understand a yeah. drink. I mean, this is... And, I, and I'm not going to say, hey, look, this is complex in the sense like, oh, I'm going to pick up all these different tastes. But what you do get with this is something that has more to it. It is not just something that you're going to pour into a glass. Mm-hmm. Like some of the other, other scotches we've tried have been very smooth. They're not exactly complicated you're just drinking it and you can sit there and drink it and you can pour yourself another one. Right, you can find the, the two dominant experiences, maybe three, but I mean, we've identified four or five or six already between smoke and sweet and oily and malty and the sea air just on the nose. Yeah, this is very much like a... And there's more. There's more to this drink than we're discussing. I'm not going to say connoisseur, but this is one of those drinks where you definitely want to be prepared mm. knowledge-wise this is what I'm going to be getting myself into and I'm not going to waste it. I'm not going to just drink no. it. I'm not going to do, just go for back like we said right. before. Right. This is something that you're now going to sit down around the fireplace right. or something around that and you're going to have a conversation with someone right. and you're going to enjoy this. You're going to make right. it last. Right, and even not to be snooty or, or whatever the word would be, um, but again, it, it wouldn't be something that I would want to pour for somebody that's in their first three months of understanding scotch, if they were on that journey, it would it would be like, I think you would want to build to understanding the different flavors and really being able to pick them out. And I appreciate them. You right. Know, it's, it's, that's part of the, the yeah. drinking of scotches is you have to be in a position where you can appreciate what you're drinking. Yeah. You're not just opening a bottle or going to it and saying, oh, look, that's an expensive scotch. That's got to be really good, blah, blah, blah. This is something where now you've you've crossed over the 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 learning curve is there now. Now you have to be able to say, hey, look, I'm not just drinking a scotch. I'm drinking a scotch because I want to taste the the different delicacies that are being put in front of me. Right. You know what happens to a whiskey that sits in an oak barrel for 21 years? You know, on the seashore versus a different 21 year old that might be more inland or on the side of a river correct right that those flavors are going to be subtle but yet contribute so much to the experience that you would want to have foundational knowledge before you tried to have leveled up knowledge yes yeah and i and i can compare and i'll compare it to one of my favorites which is the scarpa 21. yep right and it's so different the Scarpa 21 is you can you can sit there and you can drink it and you enjoy it, but it doesn't really test you. It's not there to freaking push these different buttons. Mm-hmm. Whereas this, which and ultimately is not one of my favorites, right. in the sense that I would never go to this as my standby. Mm-hmm. But when this cork is, I know yep. I'm going to be enjoying something that I'm not going to rush into and be like okay it's done right. i'm like oh I, i'm gonna make sure this is freaking right this is to bit. sit and enjoy and and again we've said it before to understand what this whiskey is offering us you know from all the flavors and again i think it begins with this idea that it's just been breathing in ocean air remember wood is you know wood leaks right of course. wood breathes yep. it's, it's permeable right in 21 years on the on the on the ocean shore there's going to give you some of those maritime qualities. And I think that we're really drinking a, a seaside whiskey. Right yeah, now. this is definitely probably out of all our episodes so far. And we've had some really good scotches, no doubts. But this is probably the first, and I'll say it, technical scotch. In the sense that now you're now being forced to take in various flavors mm-hmm. and make what you can out of it in the sense that Am I enjoying this? Which, without doubt, this is this is a very very good drink. But what has made this drink? It, yeah. it, it's that little bit of peatiness. It's mm-hmm. the little bit of sweetness right. that's there. It's the, it's right. that saltiness when you when you get ready to do your draw. Right, and it's you just know, in your in your grill. There's a it's this yeah. is probably the most complicated one we've had so far. I, I think I have to agree with you on that that complexity, and that each each draw of this whiskey 
is bringing something new to the flavor. And, and it brings I'm you noticing, in. I'm noticing a little bit less of this and a little bit more of that on the next pull. It depends where you're on, or where, yeah. where, what sip you're on. You know, have you have you have you taken back to back sips? Yeah. Have you let it rest for a little right. bit? You know, and and I we yeah. we approached it on a couple yeah. of episodes back where you had let one, let a drink go. Yeah. This is the same thing. You let this go for right, a little bit. for a little, you know, bit, a little right, bit. You yeah. know, get a little bit more out. That was the Loch Lomond, I think. Yes. Yeah. yeah, and yeah. It, this is very much, and it's it. Like I said, it's it's a wonderful drink. And there's no doubts about it. It's it's just a great, great, great scotch. Yeah. And again, it, and not to say you know that there is this, this spectrum of you know, like a, a, a plumber from a, a you know an apprentice to a journeyman to a master, but this is really more of a, of a master set of flavors, right? That I wouldn't want somebody to think this is what scotch is. I would want somebody to have that foundational knowledge and then have this experience to realize how far the scotch flavoring can go. And you would be hard pressed not to take away that award of best scotch. You'd be very hard pressed to take it away. Right, right. It, 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 I'm not like, oh, really? Whiskey of the year? <laughs> Not at all. I mean, it really is. This it's, is this is a. You can see why they might give this the gold medal. Because they're thinking about all those flavors and all those contributions, and how it's all come together in this glass. In in almost a masterful experience of just it's it's put together well. Yeah. It's, you know, if you had a really good chocolate chip cookie before, right? Yep. Right, and it's the flour and the butter and the chips. And, and the perfect crunch. And, perfect, and, like, and the temperature ratio. in the oven and the amount of time. And it's just like, boom. And any uh, 30 seconds before or after, yeah, yeah, that's good. But right there, and that's that great. Now, I just added ice to this. Okay. So, uh, basically, what I'm going to say about adding ice to this, it's... it's what it has done is now, it's for me, it has sort of divided the different tastes up. Mm -hmm. I now can actually say, okay, well, this is where I'm at on this drink. And it has a little bit of a bitter end to it. Where it's are you? The bitter end. <laughs> <laughs> but it has a little bit more of a bitter end to it in the sense that now it's really pronounced that ending for me. All right. I, I've, I've got now the here we are, but it's still, a very complex drink. I don't know where I'm, I'm like, oh, what part of this yep. am I enjoying? What part am I not really enjoying? Am I enjoying it all? Yep. Where am I on this? Because it really has a lot to it. Well, this I, is really good. I just put a little bit of water in as is uh, pretty traditional for me. So let's see, let's see where I'm at. And again, the nose is still the seashore. And a little bit of the coolness from the ice has helped out in the sense it's, it's given me a little bit more as it's, as it's starting to freaking get a little bit cooler. But I still have those those different steps of like, okay, yeah. this is not just something, this is not just something yeah. I've, I'm taking in and it's smoothly gone down. This is something that has taken its time to, to say, okay, I, it's a little sweet, there's a break right here. Okay, it's a little bit freaking more PD, a little bit more smokiness. I got a little bit more heat in my throat, yep. and I'm like, okay. Well, I, I put the water in as as I'm want to do, and I, and I'll tell you, I'll tell you again. Um, I think we both agree that a, a, a neat whiskey is generally preferred. Correct. Um, and so with the water, what happened is, is I think it it calmed down a lot of the oil. Took away from the oiliness. Yeah, yeah. In the it, sense that it took away, made it a lot looser. Right, right. It it, it didn't didn't ride around in my mouth so much as it just passed around. Um, but what it really seemed to do, and I'm not necessarily, again, I would think I would take this neat, is that it opened up more of that beach campfire more and calmed down some of the sweet maltiness. And, and I think that there's a reason they released this with the flavors that it has at the 46%, because I think they found the match. And so- It's a good balance. This almost took it out of balance a little bit. Now, if I hadn't had it neat first, I wouldn't know that my balance is off. But I think with that little splash of water, I went from 50-50 to 48-52, just a bit out of balance. Yeah. And I know 
that I would drink this neat. Yes, I think for me, the enjoyment of this was the fact that from in a neat sense, it started right here. I got some of the sweetness. Mm -hmm. Well, let's just say I got some of that saltiness when I took my, my first breath. You got that little bit of it. Then you got this little bit of sweet that transitioned to this little bit of the peat smokiness. Mm -hmm. And then it just disappeared. Whereas right. now, with the ice in there, mm -hmm. it still started off the same way, mm -hmm. but then all of a sudden the back side of it became a little bit more. Right. And I, I will say harsh in the sense yeah. that you you now feel it. Yeah. You now it's give given it strength sense. in other areas when the balance was really already in existence. Yes. Yeah. So the, the old Pultney 21 is really about neat whiskey of the year, five or six years definitely. ago. Definitely. I mean, I definitely, um, yeah, I can't argue that. Yeah, and I, and I would say now and then it, I, I look for it, and it does seem like it is hard to come by. Um, but um, if you can find some, it's it's worth having for. Um, it's for worth a, having just just the, for a good occasion. For good occasion, and for folks who understand their scotch. I mean, it really that's a that's a great that's a great drink. Yeah. So so for a bonus episode, um, this is a nice one. This was a nice one. I mean, this was you know, and I. I, I, I I'm gonna let you guys know, I don't really have a choice on what the bonus is, so I don't really say, oh, it's a bonus, and oh, look at it. He's in charge of the entire bonus thing, so it, he directs where this is going, but I will say right now, of all the bonus episodes that we do, uh, every one that you pick is pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, we'll have to break that trend at some point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. And so, what year is it, Mal? Uh, this would be 25. Man, there's been a lot of stuff in the world, right? There's been a lot of stuff. So, so we're going to end with a cheers that means good luck in Egyptian. But if we pronounce it wrong, some of you have seen some movies where, you know, you know, don't open the sarcophagus or something about the bugs or the sandstorms. So we may blow it. We may blow this out of proportion. I guess we apologize. Um, but we're going to give it a go. In Egypt, this means good luck. We think. We think. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's gonna call right and say you guys are butchering these. Uh, that is 